The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. So our next um, speaker is actually my co-moderator, Dr. Nestor Rubiano. Dr. Nestor Rubiano is the Structures Department Manager of the Houston Office of h and Corporation. He is also a lecturer for the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering of Rice University in Houston. He obtained his Master's and PhD degrees in Structural Engineering from the University of Texas at Austin. Dr. Rubiano has over 25 years of experience in Structural Analysis, Design, and construction of a significant variety of structures such as dams, buildings, and bridges. In the last 15 years, he has led the structural design of large and complex transportation projects involving multi-firm design groups and including design-build design projects, projects with great separation structures, river crossings, complex highway bridges, light rail bridges, railway, railway bridges, mine hauling bridges, pedestrian bridges, cut and um, cover tunnels, drainage structures, overhead sign bridges, retaining walls, noise barrier walls, and tall gantries. Thanks, Katarina, for that introduction. Um, so in contrast to the previous presentation that was very theoretical, mine is really practical of a bridge, uh, existing bridge in, in, in Mississippi. Um, so this presentation contains a quick bridge, bridge description, uh, condition assessment of that bridge, uh, then some destructive and non-destructive testing, um, then a structural analysis of it, load rating, and then repair recommendations and conclusions. Um, so for the bridge description, I'll be talking about the Little Tallahatchie River Bridge in New Albany, Mississippi. I'm gonna show the map in a minute. It's actually two twin bridges uh, built originally in 1965 and widened in 2013. It carries the US 78, but at the same time Interstate 22 and is uh, maintained by the Mississippi DOT um, it's located uh, about 85 miles um, southeast of uh, Memphis. So this is the location of the bridge. Um, so it is again close to Mississippi. Uh, I, I mean Memphis, north northern Mississippi, close to Memphis. Uh, very close to Tupelo, that uh, some of you may recognize as the birthplace of uh, the king, Elvis. And uh, not far from Oxford, which is the uh, Mississippi, the University of Mississippi uh, 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 city. And um, this is a close-up. So New Albany, oops, New Albany is around. It's around. It's here, and this is the uh, Little Tallahatchie River. The bridge is located here. And this is a, a Google Map. Um, uh, uh, satellite uh, location of the bridge. This is the uh, relatively recent, I believe, it's a couple of years ago. This this photo. Uh, so you see the the, the river uh, and and um, so the bridge right now accommodates three lanes in each direction. Uh, it's a 15-span concrete bridge. Uh, to, uh, Twelve of the spans, the first four and the last eight spans are. Uh, the typical pre-stress, precast concrete beams that are, are used uh, all over the country, but the three spans uh, over the uh, river are actually a, a multi-box uh, beam cast in place and uh, with expansion joints uh, at, at both ends. And uh, this is uh, taken from the as builds for, for half of the bridge. Again, there are two twin bridges and the deck of the uh, the width of the deck is 31 and a half feet for a total 63 feet 
of both bridges and originally accommodating two lanes of traffic in each direction. And uh, this is, uh, so they are supported uh, by um, single column uh, bands with integral caps and, and supported by footings on piles. Uh, so this is the widening that uh, occurred in 2013. Uh, so it increased the bridge to uh, from two to three traffic lanes in each direction. And uh, as it's very common in, in, in Mississippi, they um, widened using precast, pre-stress uh, girders uh, that are simply supported for dead load and continuous for, for live load. Uh, and they widen the entire bridge, the 15 spans. So we're going to concentrate on the, on those three spans of the continuous girder, uh, multi-box, uh, uh, cast in place, uh, girder. Uh, but, but again, uh, this is kind of the widening, uh, with five new girders on, on, on each side. Uh, so after, before two years after the conclusion, so around 2015, a lot of longitudinal uh, construction, uh, along the longitudinal construction joint, there were a significant cracking and along that, that, that joint between the existing original bridge and the widened bridge. And um, the DOT repaired the, the cracking, but shortly after they reappeared and you see some of the, um, patching that 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 happened but but and and i have a couple of uh, photos clearer photos coming up um so it was clear that there was an issue right there at that interface um so we did a condition assessment uh uh january 2015 um uh, the 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 dot uh uh so hntb in the in the baton rouge office has uh a running contract with, with the DOT, and, and so this was one of the, the projects. Uh, closed one of the lanes to facilitate inspection, and, and um, um, I guess we can look at this, I'm sorry, this one. So um, this was the inspection, was again in, in January, uh, nine degrees, uh, wind and some rain. So it was an interesting uh, condition assessment, and the, um, DOT took some uh, course from from the deck, and also they uh, got uh, uh, measured the uh, the cover of the reinforcement and the in the slab, the top reinforcement in several areas around the, the deck. Uh, there are some photos. Not sure how clear uh, you can see them from where you are, but there is significant cracking. This is close to the supports for uh, uh, and and actually both in the in the continuous span and also in the widening. So again, not, not sure how clear they, you can see from there. Uh, and also the typical situation of the armor joints being um, uh, in disrepair and actually some of the segments were completely gone. Uh, so um, that, that was also part of the uh, assessment. But here is actually the, the more, um, the, or the biggest damage was uh, that um, spalling and and uh, cracking, and you can see there the wheel path. So so it it it, it gets uh, the deterioration was very significant because of that um, uh, having the wheel path right there at, at, at the interface uh, as well. And uh, this is also taken from the as bills and, and, and oops, sorry, locating here the, the damage was around 15 feet uh, from the center line of, of the support. Uh, a lot of other damage and uh, not major, but, but I guess significant to have some corrosion in, in some areas of the bridge. And, um, and this is actually from inside the boxes. So we, uh, crawl inside the, the boxes and and uh, again it's probably even harder to see here but there is a lot of inclined cracks inside the the boxes um uh, some more of those cracks but some of those actually went to to the to both the the, the top slab and the bottom slab of, of the boxes as well and um some additional cracking uh, around um this is from from outside but you can see some Oops, some of the cracking around here and 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 there is is uh, obvious 
Uh, so again, we did some destructive testing, uh, some cylinders, very small cylinders, uh, four, four inch diameter. And um, uh, the design strength uh, in the drawings was 3000 PSI, but uh, so, the, so, so these are results combined f the, the Tallahatchie River Bridge, but also uh, a very um, adjacent bridge, the Central Avenue Bridge. And um, uh, their strength's actually really high, at, at least over 7000 PSI. Um, but also, uh, we did uh, chloride penetration testing uh, of, of, the, of the concrete in, in those cylinders. And um, uh, so there is some uh, significant uh, chlorides in the top uh, inch and a half of, of the deck. So those are the raw measurements. Uh, typically, when you have one or, or more than two pounds per cubic yard, then you typically have a problem, but uh, then, and, and this is kind of graphically showing what we, we found. Let me go back to this one. So uh, course C3 and C5 are from this bridge. And so C3 did really show very low chloride, but C6, they, it showed uh, a bit more over two. But but once it goes uh, deeper than one and a half inches, it was, it, it reduced significantly. And with the uh, measuring the covers, me it measured to uh, at least two inches covers. So I guess the conclusion was that chloride didn't really penetrate all the way to the to the to the bars. Uh, so uh, the the DOT was interested to know if it was the deterioration was also partly because of, of the typical corrosion issues or not. But the conclusion was no, it wasn't not, not really that. I have a few conclusions there. So again, destructive and non-destructive testing was performed. Material uh, deficiencies really not likely due to, to that. Uh, and the chloride did uh, uh, not penetrate down uh, enough. Uh, so then we started a refined structural analysis. Uh, we chose only one of the bridges. They were twin bridges anyway. And we concentrated on those three spans of the continuous uh, girders and did a 3D finite element analysis. Um, and, and what we tried to do is try to uh, model all the stages of construction of the, of, of, of the bridge, including the original construction and then uh, the widening. Uh, so we did an original uh, model. Oh, well, the, the, I guess this is the, the geometry of the bridge that kind of I have covered before. Um, it was originally designed for the uh, ASHO, not, not ASHTO at the time. It was didn't have the T, but uh, it, so the standard of uh, 1961. And um, then the widening, uh, so use ASHTO type 4 uh, beams. And um, so again, that's, that's the geometry. And it was designed for the standard uh, specification uh, 2002. Um, so we use CSI bridge. Uh, to do the 3D finite element uh, linear analysis. Uh, it has a, a, a pretty elaborate routine to do the moving load analysis. Uh, the frame uh, members, we just use the typical um, for the substructure elements, but for the deck and the box beams, we actually use shell elements and um, got so some assumptions. And we, we use HS20 uh, typical uh, loading um, and for the original material strength, uh, at, at the time that we hadn't the, didn't have the results yet of the um, uh, lab, so we did use the 3,000 KSI that, uh, PSI that were in the drawings. Uh, at that time, they used 33 KSI bars. Uh, but for the widening, which is uh, really modern, then they did use 4 uh, KSI and 60 KSI steel. Um, so we did um, did the load evaluation uh, that. What we typically do in the office, uh, develop the CSI bridge uh, models, and then conducted uh, service runs and, and ultimate runs. So what we did was several models. So the first um, model, A and B, was the actual original uh, bridge as built. Uh, but uh, so model B, we actually had the condition right before the widening. So uh, of course they went and, and, and removed part of the uh, of the overhang of the bridge and stuff like that. So we actually model how exactly it was right before the widening. Then we did a model, uh, uh, what we call model C uh, of the widening by itself, which is not a real bridge. 
uh, so obviously the widening would be uh, attached to the original bridge, but but just to look at the stiffness and and characteristics of of the widening by itself. So we we developed that model, and then what we did was merge the two models, and that's a good um, uh, feature that the program has is that you can actually merge uh, models. Uh, so we did, and so this is the completed uh, uh, model with the original boxes, with the widening at the same time connected, as you see here, uh, right at the at the interface. Uh, but so the two bridges separately were modeled very accurately, and then the merge model uh, was was kind of the, the best you can get, obviously, theoretically, with programs like, like these. Um, uh, so these are the live load cases, I guess, the normal that you would do in a typical design situation. So we try to to, to check all the possibilities of, of what lo lanes uh, were loader, uh, loaded and not, including the shoulder uh, as well. Uh, so analysis of the results. Um, so this is the original bridge uh, we, uh, right before widening. And I'm not going to go over the numbers, but, but uh, 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 did not. Uh, I mean, it's just a, a, a typical um, a response uh, uh, of the bridge. Didn't uh, find any significant um, uh, issue with deflections or or uh, uh, capacities. It, it was uh, all, all the capacity was adequate for for the bridge. Um, then uh, we checked uh, the shear, though, and then uh, you did you do see. Uh, concentrations of significant shears in the um, uh, the walls or the the webs of of, of the boxes, and um, definitely uh, in the interior boxes you get a significant uh, stress in shear, and we estimated the all allowable shear at 199 only. So definitely you they did have from the get-go a significant shear uh, problem which we found those cracks uh, so basically this confirmed that yeah it, it should be cracked and, and, and it was uh, then this is the widening by itself again not a, not a real um, uh, bridge but uh, you, we did see much bigger deflections than than the than the original bridge so this 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 bridge is significantly less uh, stiff, I guess, uh, from that point of view. Uh, from the point of view of, of a strength, not a problem. I mean, it was, I guess, properly designed, it had a lot of uh, strength. Uh, same in shear, didn't have any really issues in shear uh, for, for that. And then we combined the bridge. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, the substructure uh, deflections are very small for, for, for so no, no issue with the substructure because uh, the, the DOT was uh, one of their theories as well. Maybe it is um, issue with the substructure. Maybe it's deforming too much and maybe it's causing the cracking. But we didn't find any any problem with that. Uh, but definitely um, when we started looking, and I'm, again I'm going to skip all these numbers. Um, so, so here, what uh, with the combined bridge for the dead load deflections under service load, so that definitely there is a significant uh, differential, particularly a mid span of, of, of the two sides. Um, uh, so, so in the, uh, the 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 exterior spans are 75 feet long, the interior span is 90 feet long, and the differential, particularly in the in the center span, the the, the 90 foot span. Is almost two inches, which is uh, 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 very significant. Uh, live load deflections, we didn't find significant um, uh, differences there. Uh, and, and then we look at uh, the flexural stresses in, in the slab. Uh, flexural was not uh, an issue, uh, it was under, under uh, the allowable. Uh, but again, here in shear, though, we found that uh, so the estimated allowable shear, and this this was in, 
instead of a stress was enforced, that's the easier way to get it from, from CSI bridge. Uh, but the allowable was about eight keep per foot, while the, the one that was being measured is almost 20 keep per foot. So, so definitely that was uh, a significant issue in the slab. Um, and it's in a relatively near the locations where we saw the, the cracking and the spoiling in the, in, in the, in the, on the deck. Um, then we look at the shear stresses, and, and again, we found uh, sin significant uh, stresses, even in the combined bridge, actually, uh, I guess even, even worse, or, well, no, actually, we had worse stresses in the, in the bridge by itself, so seems like the widening uh, helped a little bit, taking some of the load uh, uh, of, of, of these webs, uh, but, but still over the, uh, the allowable cracking. Um, look at the moments, and, and that was fine, not, not a problem there. And then we went to the load rating. Uh, so the load rating uh, is required by the DOT anyway. Uh, every time you check these bridges, uh, to uh, the, uh, I, I guess, to uh, decide between rehabilitation or replacement. Uh, but we did use the results from the uh, finite element analysis. Uh, for the rating, I uh, use the L L L F F FR uh, method since this was uh, designed originally anyway by with the standard uh, bot bridges. So, so we decided to do that. I evaluated for HS20, but also for the Mississippi legal loads. Um, this is the question that you have seen repeatedly in, 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 in these um, sessions. And, and their results, uh, and again, I'm going to go quick over these numbers, but um, there is really not a, a, an issue from the point of view of load rating uh, for, um, for, the, for the bridge itself. So it does have adequate uh, load rating both for inventory and for operating uh, load ratings and also for the um, uh, Mississippi legal loads as well, so uh, didn't find any any issue with with, with load rating um, uh, using the results of the fine element analysis. So the conclu conclusions there from the analysis is that uh, the diagonal cracking in the box beams did cause uh, those service load shears uh, that. Uh, basically occur from the original construction, uh, not because of the uh, widening. Um, then we found the high shear force in that construction uh, along the, uh, the, between the original deck and the widening, and that caused that um, damage, and, and it's basically because of that differential in stiffness between the two bridges, and then further uh, damage because of the traffic right along that uh, that same joint. Uh, so the conclusion was that retrofit uh, was uh, necessary. Um, the cracking in the box was not very significant. I mean, it was, I guess, the size of the cracks. It, 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 there were a lot of cracks, but not, not, um, of significant size. So the recommendation there was to not do anything other than control, uh, the moisture, uh, in, in the boxes and, and have regular inspection. Um, but the flexural uh, ultimate capacity is adequate and the ratings are high, so there was not a problem from that point of view. So our repair recommendation, and let me jump directly to, to what the recommendations were, was either uh, completely replace, remove the concrete and replace it, but actually provide a, a joint uh, of the wheel path, but in the same area, and, and basically separate the two bridges uh, with a longitudinal joint. Um, there was there was an additional recommendation of maybe uh, have the joint supported on on, on one of the bridges, uh, in this case the box bridge, um, and I think there was another one kind of similar uh, recommendation. But uh, the DOT actually went with the first recommendation, and they uh, actually added that joint there, so they kind of uh, removed. Uh, part of the, the deck, rebuilt it, and added that uh, joint. Uh, there's a uh, close-up here of, of the joint. And as far as uh, I have heard, there had me, had, hasn't been any uh, other issues. Uh, bridge got open to traffic uh, back in um, 2015, and um, it's been working very well since then. So uh, that was, a, I guess, a happy ending for, for this project. Any question or All right, thank you very much.